Welcome back. Well, welcome back to the Nihilus Media Podcast. This is uh, 296. I'm Mark. I'm Tyler. I'm Rich. And we're back playing Blues Brothers 2000. Not Blues Brothers 1000. Not Blues Brothers 3000. Blues Brothers 2000. We would love to save the game here. This game so, gives me the Omicron variant of COVID just from looking at it. We are at the the final boss of the Windy City, we just spent like yeah. a half an hour trying to get here. Yeah, which is the end of the game. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> this is the final this is the final part. The final bussy. Yeah. This yeah. is the forbidden bussy. I really fucking hate that guy uh, in the fedora at the yeah. bar or table, whatever the fuck that is. We gotta Tyler, grab some you remember bottles. how to beat him? Yep, you gotta grab the bottles and then knock down the things. Right, you have up. you have the max amount of bottles, Tyler, so how would you start Throwing How about you uh, start sucking my fucking dick, you little bitch? <laughs> Shut up. I mean, the frog. I, I, the I frog could. Here, sucking the fucking oats out of my fucking <laughs> cock. Sucking the peen? Sucking the peen. Uh, I like women. Is that fuck Elmo or Kermit the Frog? Kermit. Yeah, 100%. Kermit already has a fuck hole on him, right? But but um I would I would I would wreck the Cookie Monster. Oh, uh, the Cookie Monster uh ravage you because he would ravage your little cookie. Yeah, it's because of the uh, you know mm. uh, as Mike Mate once once eloquently put, I'll show you how to eat a cookie. Ah! <laughs> Wait, let's see if we can hit it here. Oh no, nope. I got hit there. Okay, all right, you got hit there, brother. I got hit there, brother. Uh, so you want to hear some uh, sure some real life George Costanza shit? No. Yes, please. So like last month when it was like Christmas time, I was like somewhat seeing somebody and not like officially yet. Yep. And, and but I didn't want to start seeing them officially because it was December. Because mm -hmm. then I'd have to buy them a gift. <laughs> so I just held off until January so I could just not Enough. buy a gift. Enough. That reminds me of a story actually about one of my first serious girlfriends. So. Uh, I was 14, and uh, obviously, I, when I was 14, I was that, that cringy, edgy metalhead kid. Still am, but um, here's the thing. So there was this girl who really liked me. Uh, she made it very obvious. She didn't ask me out at all. I remember one time, like we were just it was around December, and uh, we just started talking, and then um, what was it? She um, like she just asked me what, do you, what I want for Christmas, and I was like, uh, I don't know. And I didn't, I was stupid. And, well, I mean, I knew she was asking me for something, but I was playing it as if I just wanted just something in general. I was like, oh, I could go for a band shirt, I guess. And she's like, what band? I was like, Slayer? I don't know. And then she just, and then immediately she buys it. Like that, like that second. And I'm just like, okay. Like she says, okay, done. And I'm like, well, thanks, I guess. And then um, I felt terrible because I didn't buy her shit because um, I also didn't have money. But now I don't actually really feel that terrible because <laughs> it's, 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 it's a vibe. I got a free shirt and, uh, and then we broke up and I still continue to wear that shirt until it got ripped up. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Not much of a story, but it's just something that fucking awkward dating at high school is uh, so that, kind of a vibe. So now that you and Mark are dating, did he get you the same uh, uh, Slayer shirt? Let me see. Did What did Mark get me for Christmas? Mark, what'd you get me for Christmas? I got you nothing because I don't care about you. Yeah, that, Yo, I'm nice. filing for divorce now. <laughs> that sucked. He died. Don't worry, I got two. Are you kidding me, brother? What? You, have all your, you already have all the bottles. What are you doing? I don't know. I just died, brother. I'm just... Yeah, but it, dude, on the screen, it indicates that you have Every the bottles. Every step that I take is another mistake to you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come on, brother. Uh, by the way, just for full transparency, we're using a Hori uh, pad to play Blues Brothers, and it's god-awful right now. Yeah, almost like I've been fighting against the Hori <gasps> almost pad. Almost like I've been peeing oh, pop right in the I'll tell you why I wouldn't play with the fucking... Go back to my All right, you sound like an alien from fucking Star Wars Episode One. Let's cool it, children. Let's just talk about... Come on, bro! Never mind. This is ridiculous. Dude, I got that. I want to be controversial here, but I think this game might suck poo poo diarrhea. Poo poo diarrhea ass drippings off the top of the fucking third shelf. Yeah. The fucking... 
bitch. What is this game be by LJN? Oh, we, <laughs> we might get away with this. We might get away with this. Then fucking try. Ooh, we got away with it. All right, so we can do it on the... Th <laughs> Who fucking Tyler, gave this? Tyler, you suck at this game. Uh, I'm gonna grab a bottle so I don't have to go up again. But oh, yep, there we go. Yeah, you get hit six times this time. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. You guys both sound like you don't have fathers. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to call us out, dude. Like, I'm sorry. I try to be a little bit more. I myself am trying to be a little bit more calm this time around. As opposed to the last few pl let's plays where I was really kind of raising my voice like a uh, spaz. So, I think because I, I am a spaz in real life. But the reason why is because I don't have a father. Don't no worry. Because you have a father. You don't have a father. Yeah, I know. Dad, is that you? You ever watch Big Daddy with Adam? No, I've only yeah. watched Big Daddy too. Yeah. Yeah. How was that one? I think Mark is my big daddy. Thanks. You know what I watched the other day, and I didn't even know that they had a second one, and I didn't even watch the second one because I will never. Jingle all the way. Jingle all the way. I literally, there's a second one with Larry the fucking Cable Guy. Yeah, he's also in the Tooth Fairy too. Wait, the Cable Guy. Wait, is, are we are we thinking about the same Cable Guy? Yeah, Larry. Yeah, Larry the Cable Guy. The He's like the, you know you're a redneck when you're fucking... Oh, you that guy. You know you're a redneck when your fucking dick is all red. Pussy. Oh, that guy. <laughs> you know you're okay. a redneck when your dog got I a was fatter pussy thinking, than your wife. <laughs> I was thinking of that awful Jim Carrey movie. Oh, okay. no, the Cable Guy's a great movie. I hated that movie. That's controversial right there. That is controversial. But, I don't know. Jim Carrey in that movie was... Just like he reminds me of like actual friends I've had in real life that I just like could not be friends with anymore. Yeah. The password be... is nipple. Because he would just act. They would just act just like. You have to go on the other side, Tyler. <sighs> you know everything was nice and dandy until I only have one bottle left. Should I go down and get more? No. Well, risk it because you only have one more thing to hit, and if you if you just do it correctly. You'll okay. <laughs> just, just Tyler, stop, like, stop, stop sucking the devil's cock and just do it. See, you suck oh. the devil's cock. What happened? Game over. Now we gotta start the fucking beginning. <laughs> I think it starts us there, cause we did a save. If this goes right back, to no, it goes back to the beginning, Tyler. I know it does. Just listen to me next time. If this goes no, back doesn't. to the beginning, I think I'm gonna rip my pubes off. If so, we're we're playing a different game, brother. We'll come back to this. <laughs> I just... No, you have to do it. You just do it. Just fucking listen to me. Fuck! <laughs> All right. Wait. Fuck! Let's, let's switch out controllers. That no, it's not going to change anything. Just fucking listen to me. Because I, pl yeah. I played the fucking... I played the fucking... The, the thing you need to be to do, and I beat it. Just fucking listen. You had one more hit on the guy. Yeah, no, I needed two. Either way. I had to, hit, I had to collect the balls. You, yeah, but you didn't have to collect six of them. You, know? you had like four of them. You were fine. See, what I was thinking was I had... Because he follows you. If I you would have... If you would have... If you would have just misdirected him and then fucking turned, then you wouldn't have hap Then you wouldn't have had the ha been in this predicament. And now we're fucking, now we're fucking jerking each other off, and, and, you know, and there's no lube, and now I'm getting chafed. <laughs> there is no lube. Oh, we probably so put better. on the, uh, diaper rash cream. Alright, we're back, boys. We're back, we're yeah. back. So now this episode's, again, once again, gonna only be Chicago. Chicago! So, I heard you, uh, recently watched all of Star Wars again? I haven't watched all of it, but I've watched the majority. I've, uh, because I've, I've been working on my idea. I've, I've talked about this a few times on the podcast, on multiple podcasts that I. What the fuck? Keep going, keep going, keep going. You're fine. I've talked about this multiple times on the podcast where I want to do a video about me rewriting the prequels. And I've done a. I finally finished my first draft of all three of episode one, two, and three. Um, to do that, I, I rewatched the prequels, and I also watched, um, 
Rogue One solo to see if there's any lore that I wanted to keep. Mm -hmm. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I also, I also watched, been watching the original trilogy, but I've only seen A New Hope and Empire so far. I'm going to rewatch Empire, uh, Return of the Jedi probably later tonight. Um, so, uh, the prequels are something. I used to, I think I, on this show, I've defended Phantom Menace. I think I'm bonding with Bond. I've defended Phantom Menace. And I want to give the world a public apology. I uh, I should not have done that. Yeah. Because uh, the movie is bad. Yep. Like I've uh, been saying. It's very, very bad. Um, it's nearly incomprehensible. And, like. What's the best scene of the movie? The best scene is probably the pod race or the Duel yeah, of Fates. Honestly. Duel of Fates is the best part. I haven't seen that movie in 15 years, but I feel like the only energy... There's actually... Wait, was the Duel of Fates... What was Opex that one again? That's, Steakhouse. that's the one with... That's, that's the Opex Darth Maul, Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon. Yeah, when Qui-Gon Oh, okay. Yeah, dies. I agree. Those are the only two watchable scenes in that whole movie. Yeah. Now this um, is pod racing. So the reason why I can't agree 100% that that's the best scene in the movie is because they keep cutting away from it. And when they cut away from it, it's like Jar Jar being like, Misa no have a blue ball. And then and then they're like, you're like oh, fuck. And then they'll cut back to Obi-Wan and Darth Maul again. And then they'll cut back. And then they'll cut back. And it won't even be Jar Jar. I'll be fucking, let's try spinning, R2. That's a neat trick. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, God, You love the part when he sends the missile it. into all of those innocent people that are just trying to do their job on that fucking ship to kill like four people. And they're like, yeah, we did it. We blew up the whole thing. All uh, those poor fucking essential workers that had to come to work to clean that fucking ship got killed because Anakin was like, yeah, we did it. In Anakin's fucking defense, he person. didn't know that he did that. He did it by accident. Oops. Genocide. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. It's, uh, it's you know, that, that's that's Anakin's thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've, yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Anakin, yeah. you just killed all those younglings. Oh, boy. I'm pretty, I mean, I was able to remarkably <sighs> keep a lot of what happens in Phantom Menace. Yeah. Like, a lot of the th things that happen in Phantom Menace happen in my rewrite, which I didn't think was going to happen. Like what? Like, every, like, pretty much, like, every beat that happens in Phantom Menace happens. It just happens in a different way, if that makes sense. Where I was able to, like, be like, oh, all right, they go they go to here, they go here, they do this. Obi-Wan is in a quad gun are doing this. Mm-hmm. It's just that now everything is recontextualized, and yeah. and like Anakin's no longer eight; he's twenty, and Owen is there instead of Anakin's mom, and like I, I brought in other characters like Governor Tarkin's in there from like the get go. He's like Padme's like a, like a servant. Uh, so is Baru. Uh, Palpatine is a little bit more um, scummy from the get. Uh, Darth Maul has an actual arc, and Qui Gon is cooler. Obi Wan is a lot more headstrong and naive. Does Qui Gon have like a spy arc? Because he was wasn't he initially in like the the literature? He was like a fucking no. But with he was supposed to be like a dark side. Uh, he was a Sith, and then he went to the Jedi side as a spy, and then he fell in love with the Jedi side, and that's why he was hired to be killed. Wasn't that like a thing? Maybe in one of the one of the legends books or something. But I'm not doing that. Uh, My name. Is I'm, I'm gonna. Name. I'm basically starting it, stating, like, making it be like Qui Gon was gonna be the first gray Jedi. Oh. Tyler, give me it when you get up there. All right, I got you. Anyway, so he was the first gray Jedi. That's that's what uh, he's not. He's not the first, but he's like moving in that direction. That's where he was gonna end up going. Yeah. But he dies before he can achieve it. Um, that's, that's kind of what he, he's going to be doing in, in it. But anyway, Attack of the Clones. But then how will that, how will that affect fucking Obi-Wan? Wouldn't Obi-Wan be like, then I want to train fucking Anakin to be the well, gray. Well, Anakin's, Anakin's thing, his, his, his training, well, Obi-Wan isn't, um, Qui-Gon's apprentice anymore. Like, that's cause it contradicts wild. the original trilogy. So who is Obi Wan? Just some kid. Obi Wan is a Jedi Knight. By the time we we, we start oh, Phantom Menace, okay. so Obi so Qui Gon's a master and Obi Wan's a knight, mm -hmm. and like they're just buds, like they're friends, and they work together on missions. How is he occasionally. a knight that young? I'm beefing up his age. 
So he's going to be real old. And no, he's a knight. Because the thing is, you can be a Jedi knight when you're like tw in your twenties. I don't like I don't like George Lucas's interpretation because it once again contradicts the original trilogy. Because in the original trilogy, Luke could be could be a master at like twenty eight, whereas in 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 uh, George's one, you can't be a master until like you're in your fifties, which doesn't make any sense. So, um, I'm just having Obi Wan start out as a knight, okay. and Qui Gon is a is a master. And Obi Wan, and the reason why one of the things that really fucks up Anakin, in my rewrite, rather than it being a thing, so I, I want there to be a temptation throughout the prequel trilogy of there being like Obi Wan do I do could the top down could possibly go to the dark side rather than Anakin. Oh shit! I fucked that up. All right, hold on. Let me just do it from from the go. How do I do the the, uh, the top down camera? I don't know, but um. So Obi Wan has like this temptation to possibly become a Sith, mm -hmm. and it ends up becoming being Anakin. And the reason why is because Obi Wan has so much hatred and anger towards Darth Maul, and that is what kind of begins to corrupt Anakin. So does Count Dooku not exist? He does exist, and he's a completely different character. So Darth Maul is going to live. Darth Maul is like going to live through all th his yeah. his spider body. Is no. he going to take the point of General Grievous in the the final film? No. So General Gravis is going to be there too. Yeah. It seems like you're juggling way too many bad characters. Nope. I'm doing as many characters as they have, bad characters that they have. Kung Duke is not a bad guy. Yes, he. Not in what mine. What are you talking about? In mine, he's not because it doesn't make sense for him to be a bad guy because a lot of the points he points out in Attack of the Clones are pretty fucking good points. And I'm making him a more complex character. But if you're gonna have like everybody in the last movie, that means you're gonna have no. Some Count Dooku dies in two. You're gonna have Palpatine, Count Dooku, General Grievous, Darth Sidious. Well, fucking. Maul Maul dies early on Darth in three. Maul. Yeah, that's where Count Dooku dies. Yeah, he dies in the same spot where where. Uh, so why wouldn't you just completely take out General Grievous? Because Grievous is important. Why is he important? Because he's he's what he's one of the reasons why the 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 the, the Clone Wars happen. What? So basically, Dooku's my my the reason. No, I'm getting rid of that, dude. So why even have Dooku? <laughs> because Dooku is something else. So, all right, so Dooku. Are you gonna have a Johnny? Right, do you want me to explain? Then? Do you want me to explain it before if I make you're the video? Dooku, you better have a Johnny Ventress. Star Wars debate I've ever seen. All right, so so all right, so Dooku's arc is different. So in Phantom Menace, we we see Dooku right from the get. Well, not from the get. Wait, he's on the council, right? He's before the, before we go down Dark Side, is Jar Jar in these films? Or are you cutting him? Completely? He's in it. He's in the. He's oh in the, fuck you! He's in the Phantom Menace. I'm not watching it. He's in the Phantom Menace, but he's only there to get them to the Gungan City. No, let him die. He does die. Let him get shot, and he's like, Gungan City, forward there, dies. You know, can I give? Can I just give a hot take for a second about Jar Jar Binks? Um, Jar Jar Binks, like. You gotta hold I, that. I, yeah, hold this. You get me there again. Yeah, yeah, All you. right, Jar Jar Binks, though. I haven't seen Phantom Menace or really any of the prequel like movies in like 15 years. Um, but from what I remember of them, honestly, even though everybody was annoyed by Jar Jar Binks, I personally was not. So, and I think even when I watched like you know clips of it, I think it's because like I gotta rewatch it as a whole. I all right, maybe I will rewatch it as a whole, but I think it's because like I've gotten so used to crappy like voice acting from s all different types of media. It's yeah. it's not even the voice, it's everything. Everything Jar -Jar. about him. He's just annoying. You could cut him from the whole movie and everything would be okay up to just the beginning part where they're like this is how you get to the Gungan city because they saved him. Well, to me you, the guy All right, you're done. Yeah. You're done. Really? <laughs> the bat like the one of the, one of the worst parts about the prequels though was really the actor for Anakin. <laughs> He is so insufferable. Dude, in Jingle All the Way, he was great. In Jingle All the Way, he was great. So, Juku is on the council in Episode 1, okay? Okay. Because and the thing with Episode 1 is you need to start the Clone Wars. Yep. So, Dooku's, but Dooku's on the side. So, like, the Jedi are, like, debating whether or not they should even let that happen because they, they want peace and order, right? They don't want to have war. And Dooku's like, that's our thing. We want peace and, we want peace and order. We don't want to be warriors like that. And so basically what he says is like, if we, if we deploy that clone army, I'm off the council, I'm done. And then they're like, well, we're going to, we have to do it. That's the only, that's, that's what we have to do. Like, there's no other option. It's like, you either do that or we sit by and we watch genocide. And, but so Dooku leaves, he's like, fuck you guys, I'm out. 
And then when two and two, he's on Geonosis in the beginning, and they're like, you, like Obi Wan and Anakin, like, hey Dooku, what the fuck you doing here, buddy? Why are you with the Why are you at the Separatist hub? And he's like, it's literally not what you think, guys. And then like. They, they, like, arrest him, they bring him to Coruscant, and then he has, like, a trial moment, and then, like, he's basically like, yo, you guys have no idea what's going on, you guys think that, like, there's, like, the, like, the, like, the blah, 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 like, the, like, the Senate is corrupt, there's, like, dar- the Sith Lords, there's dark side energy here, uh, I, I got some people on the Trade Federation who are willing to back my statements, because they like, they think they're being played, and then, basically, Darth Maul kills him while he's on the thing, you got a big action sequence, it's fine, you know? That's what that's what that's what we're doing. Like Dooku is like Dooku is more of like a, a a red herring character rather than like oh I'm a Sith Lord guy. Then why do you even have a Sith Lord there? Because you need Darth like Maul. he's always going to be a Sith Lord. No, he's not. Then why have it be Dooku? Why not just have it be a regular character? Because Dooku's cool. Yeah, because he's a Sith Lord. He I don't think, I don't think it's why no, he's cool because Christopher Lee. So you could have Christopher Lee be a different character. There, there's no point in putting in Count Dooku, especially because they really fucked up by not putting a Johnny Ventress in the fucking films, because she's dope. That's his battle one. You remember the girl with the fucking two lightsabers? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. I mean, no. But my Sith lords are gonna be Darth Sidious and Darth Maul, and Darth Maul is gonna have a way more importance to the plot, and he's gonna have a lot more scenes and a lot more character development. Um. But yeah, you'll see. I, I said I'm working on. I'm gonna be working in the video. I finished the first drafts of the of the of the thing. Uh, so Attack of the Clones. When I watched Attack of the Clones, I was uh, that one was tough because I couldn't. I could. I could keep some things that happened in it, but on the whole, Attack of the Clones is like nearly like 88 percent an original script. Like script. I had to like start from the from scratch and write an original Star Wars story. Attack of the Clones is like I know it exists and i know i've seen it but i don't remember any of it at all and it just from what i can tell you about it just from that it's the most forgettable film in all of movies with the exception of uh what's a really forgettable film um of like the star wars films i was gonna say the uh attack the, the, the second one of the new films was uh oh, pretty forgettable the last jedi i hated that one no 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 the one before the last jedi. rogue one what, which one? Rogue One. No, no, no. The the one of the... the oh, like, Force Awakens? Force Awakens. No, okay. no, no. What was the one after the Force Awakens? Rise of Skywalker. Rise... That. No, you're thinking of... The Rise of Skywalker is the third one. Yeah, oh. it was the third one. Then... The Tyler. second one. What the, the fuck do you want time. me to do, Mark? Beat what the, the fuck? Beat the level. Beat it. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, then stop complaining. <laughs> I've, I've never seen two individuals... He gets all my so nerves angry. in in such a way... <laughs> It's so fucked. No, no, he got on your nerves in two ways. He's nagging at you about this game, and he's also spawning the be- biggest Star Wars. Yeah, he's possible. trying to hit me with fucking Star Wars shit, and I'm trying to listen. And yeah, all right. So anyway, uh, Tyler Clown sucked, but it's I don't think it's as bad as Phantom Menace. Yeah, I think it sucks. Like it's it's, it's a piece of shit, but it's nowhere near as bad as Phantom Menace. What's the Menace. coolest right. part in Attack of the Clones? <sighs> Uh, probably the space. I'm fucking done, bro. Put in Tony Hawk. Fuck this game. <laughs> I don't ever want to touch this game again. Um, I would probably say the 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 bat like when they're when you know that part when um that bounty hunter tries to kill Padme with the bugs. Yeah. And then. That part's lame. Yeah, that part's lame, but the yeah. chase scene through Coruscant's pretty cool. No, that part's lame as well. The best part is in the fucking arena. Okay. That's all right. That's the best part. Here's That's the, the only part of the movie that I remember. Here's the thing. I'm going to just go on a limb and say Phantom Menace is better simply because I remember more of Phantom Menace than I do anything Attack of the Clones. So that is the only reason why I'll say it's better. I haven't seen either in many years, but the fact that like I don't, I can't even, the only thing I can remember about Attack of the Clones is the Padme meme that was going around. That was like, oh, I remember... That was a scene that happened, and that's it. Oh, another good part of Attack of the Clones is that part where fucking Anakin is like, on um, like Padme and Anakin will share a romantic moment, but George is trying to throw some foreshadowing in there. So he just has Anakin say he's a fascist and believes that they should have a dictatorship, and then she's like, "You're so cute." And they just like gloss over the fact that like Anakin's like, "I think we should commit genocide." 
<laughs> That's uh, it's, it's, it's it's just like great Lucas writing. Also, uh, Tali, so want to do that thing where we beat every game? Yeah. Okay. The more you say it, the more I want to. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, no, no, Tyler, give into your angry feelings and just be like, "Fuck this game," because I'm just watching this is like, you know, I I'm feel- about to just use the last save file and just skip this boss. I, we've beaten him. Perfect. That sounds good to me because honestly, watching this, I feel like it's it's like the equivalent of watching like solo. We're gonna try one more time, and if we can't do it here, then we'll just we'll switch to around. Like I said, after this, if. After we beat this, we can play Tony Hawk if you guys want to play it. No. I will play Tony Hawk yeah, yeah, for yeah. a thousand years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. No, we'll be, we're going to beat all three levels. No, anyway. no, no, because you're just going to complain the whole time. I don't want to hear it. I'll complain the whole time with any game. Yeah. If I'm, 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 uh, that's my character as I complain. But anyway, I watched uh, Th- Revenge of the Sith is actually like a lot better than I remembered it being. And I, I had to change like nearly nothing. Like I had to just like, re- like fit it in with what I've changed already. Because, like, Anakin's arc... Re- the reason why Anakin goes to the dark side is completely different than why he goes into the film, because the way he does it in the film is stupid. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about that here. I'm going to save it for the actual video. Okay. Uh, I remember you were telling me this, though, at one point, and I just remember disagreeing with you on something, but I'm not going to say what it is, because we're going to save it for the video. I actually took I actually took your criticism of it, and I changed it. All right, perfect. Yeah. Um, so, the... Uh, so anyway, then I rewatch. I, I know I finally watched. I had never seen Rogue One, and I wanted to see if I could take anything from Rogue One. And I'm like, no, not really. This movie's really like uh, watching watching Rogue One was a really weird experience because it was like watching a really big budget fan film. Yep. Like even like like the, the way it opens where, where it has like the Rogue One like logo or like title card, and it's like it looks like shit. It's like it's not quite the Star Wars logo, but it's similar. You can't sue us for it, and it has like this this theme that isn't the Star Wars theme, but it sounds like it. You can't sue us over it, mm-hmm. and it just had a lot of those moments. And I was just like, "This is like, dude, the fact that they had the fucking guy from A New Hope show up, the guy who's like, he doesn't like you. I don't like you either. Yeah, like the fact yeah. that he was in there, I'm is like, the same actor. No, 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 okay." So they just have this the, these these two guys who are gonna be in a new hope, and it's just like, but why are they on that planet when this planet's about to be blown up? Just, so like, then how the fuck it. are they gonna be on Tatooine? Dude, they're just connected to planets that blow up. Well, Tatooine doesn't blow up. Oh yeah, Al- uh, fucking Alderaan, Alderaan blows up. Yeah, yeah. Um, and maybe Dan Dantooine. I mean, I think they might have blown up Dantooine, but uh. And then, like, that really weird, like, Uncanny Valley Governor, Tar- like, Tarkin shit that they had. Mm-hmm. Like, just have one scene with them. And then, all- or put them on the hologram. That then- would have been totally fine. Yeah. Where they had a- he looked cool, though. He looked like a really cool video game character. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, and the Leia one at the end was rough. That was rough. But, yeah, I, I didn't, I-, I-, I thought Rogue One had a lot of good moments. And a lot of cool things. I just didn't give a shit about any of the characters. Yeah, and the best part of the movie was the fucking Vader scene. I dis- I disagree. Shut I up. Think, no, Shut I up. think I think it's almost almost cool. Almost cool. He literally blenders through a bunch of people. Yeah. Well, here's my. Here, do you want to hear my criticism? No. Okay. Because I know it's wrong. No, go ahead. So, I know it's wrong. So my criticism of it is that I think it would have been cooler if it was the characters we had grown to like the whole movie because like he just kills a bunch of rando fucking rebels that we've never met before he's not gonna go through and fucking blender the people that they're like oh yeah you remember how we liked those people that doesn't make a lick of sense for Garrett him. does he's, he's supposed to be a villain it should have been that they passed it off to somebody from the movie that would have been fine and they have to see that and then they could rely that I mean, uh, relate to the person and be like, "Yeah, yo, this is like." But Vader's on. The I show. would agree with you if if they didn't kill off all those characters anyway, but they killed literally all of them. Yeah. So like, if the you just sucks. so if you would have just taken those characters and then have and fed them to Vader, it would have made the, the stakes of no, like it, it would have made you just hate the movie even more than you hate it. I disagree. I think it, I would have liked it a little bit more rather than having the really weird, dram- like melodramatic moment where we had Andor and uh, Felicia Jones on the fucking beach while they get blown up. Like that was like so melodramatic and lame. Where I think that, like I said, like if you just had like them on the ship where they well, think they've done it and they think all hope that they they've, they've achieved like what they like Andor's achieved what he's always wanted to do, which was like the winning of the rebellion. 
but then it comes at a price where Darth Vader literally just like uses him for like butter. <laughs> no. No, because the whole point was that y you didn't know if they were gonna live or die, and it led up to the very ending where they they did die. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying is like if you would have just had like Vader be the one to kill them. And then Dash Rendar flies in and saves the day. What do you mean? That's what. I'm not saying that he has to save the day. I'm not saying any of them save the day. I'm saying that they all die still, but it's just they get yeah, killed by I Vader want rather than Vader to fucking just shred them up, brother. I'd rather do that than just have Vader kill a bunch of people we've never met before. Mm, I don't know. And then uh, I, I, I tried this watching Solo. I tried. I got 45 minutes in. I turned it off. I think that's where I got to too. I was like, one, the movie looks like shit. I think that's why I never bothered watching it. It's just like, nope, the, I, I'm done with Star Wars now. The cinematography is so dark and gloomy, and it, I can't see what's happening 90% of the time, that I was just like, I'm not doing this anymore. What about Childish Gambino? He was fine. Yeah. But he was I, in the movie? Yeah, he played Lando. Oh. He, but like the, the moment where I was pretty much already done was when they were like, so what's your name? Han. Who, who are your people? I don't have any people. Hmm. Han Solo. Solo. And I was like, this this is this is enough. <laughs> You're like, enough of this garbage. Yeah. And then I've rewatched I then I recently rewatched yesterday I rewatched um, A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. And uh they're pretty fucking good movies, guy. Yeah? Yeah. And because uh, I, I need to rewatch them to make sure my lore is intact. For the prequels, yeah. and then uh, I'm gonna watch Return of the Jedi. I'm also watching the despecialized versions because uh, they're better. Okay. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna watch Return of the Jedi, and then I'm debating whether or not to do the sequel trilogy to do a rewrite of that because, like, the thing about the sequel trilogy is that I feel like I can't take almost anything from the movie. Yeah. Because I have to like, I'll have to mainly take things from the EU, EA, like the EU. The yeah, use the D-pad, buddy. Okay, come on, brother. You got this. Hell yeah, he hit it. By the way, Mark is on the controller. I can't do the dancing parts. This is all him. All right, over down A, brother. Yeah, three times in a row. <sighs> this game fucking sucked. <sighs> it's Blues Brothers 2000. If we can't beat him, though, I think we'll just we'll skip uh, this boss and we'll keep going. Uh, just to keep the, the momentum of the episodes. We can't stay on the Windy City for the whole show. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm thinking about it's because, like, I hate the way what they do with Luke. I yeah. also I also want to take... I'm, I'm going to watch The Mandalorian but to make my decision to see what they're doing with it. Because, like, I need to, I, I need at least some... I'm, I know I'm going to take some... If I do the sequels, I'm going to take some inspiration from, like, the a, like the EU stuff. Because I think, like, that like was a lot better and less messy. <laughs> is uh, the holiday special anywhere in your... For the, your... Halloween, the holiday special is canon. It is? Okay. So there is going to be a Life Day scene in episode two. Uh, I'll, you know what? I'll throw in a life they mention for you. Is Anakin still gonna kill all the Tusken Raiders? No. Fuck. So what about his mom? She just dies. His mom's not involved. Are you kidding me? You're awful, brother. You'll have to wait, Tyler. What the fuck was that, bro? It doesn't jump when you're running. That, that is true. That is very true. I just burped. I'm sorry. It's all good. Um, what's your? Who's your favorite character in Star Wars, my guys? You already know mine. Ooh, okay. So, it's Booba Fett. As bad as an actor as the guy who plays Anakin is, I'm just gonna go on a limb and say Anakin. Aiden Kircher. Just because I always like um, seeing like just like because as a character, I think he's kind of interesting because you just see that he becomes. And he starts out good, but then he becomes, like, an enemy. Like, he's, like, a tragic hero in yeah. the story. So, I always thought that stuff was always really cool. Just seeing a protagonist become an antagonist. And, like, I can name tons of examples on it. Like, um, you guys know the manga series Berserk. 
yep. with uh, Griffith. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like you just see how he becomes like this like antagonist of that's just like filled with everything that he kind of was fighting against. So it's I always love seeing hunter. that. It's really kind of like dark and sort of um, intense. So I would I would go on a limb and say Anakin, but the guy who plays Anakin is no. Uh, Jar Jar Binks. I. <laughs> Despise him. I will caress your leg if you don't take that back. Actually, fun the fact in episode two, I when I was watching it, when Anna, when Jar Jar shows up, there's a part where he looks directly into the camera and winks. No, he doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and it's because of George, because George wanted to make fun of people who hated him so much. That so it's like, like, oh, winky, he's back. Winky, tinky, winky. I remember as a kid, because I back when I was a kid, I liked Jar Jar. I remember being like confused of why he wasn't in the sequels, and I was just like, why isn't he like in Attack of the Clones much anymore? And why is he not like at all? Like, he's like barely in three. I'm like, why the fuck? Where like where did he go? This little man got to go. Like, I think he was intended as a comic relief character. Yeah, I mean, so <gasps> I got a one up off him. In the, that's in, big, bros. In the making of the of episode one, there's a there's a line that's like the most famous line from the documentary, mm -hmm. is when he's like, "If Jar Jar, if we can, if Jar Jar doesn't work, the movie doesn't work." That's what he said. Yeah, because he's like Jar Jar's a funnier character than we've ever had before, so you know it's like you know he's a big risk, and you know, but I think if Jar Jar works, and the whole film works, and obviously it doesn't work, and then the film didn't work, but. That's like that. That's like anybody who is interested in filmmaking should watch the making of Attack. I mean, Phantom Menace, because you just see someone make every wrong decision. Like every decision he makes becomes wrong, and no one challenges him. Like they, there's like when they're when they're casting Anakin, a kid comes in and he's like really good, mm -hmm. and he looks exactly like Mark Hamill, and yeah. Lucas rejects him because he's like he looks too much like Luke. That's the whole point, though. That's the father and son. Yeah, and he's like, he like hits his marks too perfectly. It's it's it, it's not as authentic. And then we'll cut to Anna, like, Jake Lloyd's like audition. He's like stumbling on every line, and George's like, it's more authentic. So I think we should do it with him. And then we'll cut to like when they're shooting the movie, and he's just like, yeah, it just takes him forever to do anything. And it's just like, you know, we're doing like forty takes with this kid, and they're showing him like loot, like fucking up every scene. And like Luke is losing his mind, and it's just like, you, dude, you did that yourself. That is your, that is your fault. And then, and then there's like, the best part, the the, the best part of the film is when like the documentary is when he, they watch the first cut of Phantom Menace, and they all sit there in silence and in, in horror, <laughs> what they just watched, and he, and then it cuts to Lucas a close up of Lucas. He's like, I think I may have gone a little too far in some places, and then. <laughs> And then, like the rest of like, the rest of the movies, just them panicking, because they don't know what to do. Because like, there's a part where they're like, they're like in the, uh, like, George's kitchen, and he's like, I mean, like, I mean, if it's confusing to us, it's gonna be really confusing to audiences. So we have to like try to diminish the fe effects of this. And like, like they're in like, he like in full on panic mode because he did, he like realized he made a bad movie, yeah. and he just spent like a hundred and fifty million dollars. It's so crazy how much he spent on that movie. Like, to be honest, some of the the digital effects still look okay. But <laughs> no. No, not in Phantom Menace. In Phantom Menace? Yeah, some of them look okay. No. Okay. Dude, I, dude, I just watched it. They fucking don't. I'll say this. The only good movie in that entire prequel was... Um, yeah. yeah, that was just... That movie was actually, like, kind of, like, fucked up, even for as a kid. But all the other ones, like... I don't know, like... It's been so long, so I can't really say, really judge the, uh... To be totally honest, it looks like every, like, 2000s movie with, a C with CGI. That's just what it looks like to me. That's fair. I, I don't know, man. It, it, it's like, it's a, anytime, anytime, like, there's a character that's not human that shows up on screen in, in that, like, their eye lines never match. Come on, Sebulba. Sebulba's the man. Do, honestly, one thing I will defend Watto. about about uh, yeah, Watto is my man. I love Watto. Eddie, Eddie, oh Eddie! <laughs> Republican is no good out here. He's something more real. Is it, is Watto... no parts are worth two slaves. That by a long shot. Is uh is Watto gonna be in the movie? Oh yeah. Okay. 
Watto got a big, make him a Jedi. Watto and and Sebulba got bigger parts in mind. <laughs> Sebulba so, should have been like a fucking a spy. I've actually thought about. I, I I considered it when I was re when I was writing Attack of the Clones mm -hmm. that like Sebulba shows up and now he's like a fucking uh, a Republic fucking pilot because like but then I was just like no because I like the idea that from like the Legends canon that he was like he's like an actual like athlete like he actually like so he gave pod races for like I brought pod racing back like they don't we don't we had like the pod race and and episode one. We don't we don't have another pod race match, but when he's chasing the bounty hunter in two, which I kept, where they they crash land into a pod racing thing on Coruscant where it's more professional, it looks like more like an F Zero type thing. Yeah. All right, that's cool. I'm about that. I also gave Jane Goffet some cool shit to work with. All right, real quick. Oh yeah. Oh sorry. How many times do you have to hit this guy? How many times have we got to hit this, this loser? I think I have to get to the other side, so I have to go get some more bottles. Yeah. Um. All right, so Tyler, what you want to do is you're going to want to misdirect them. Or don't. Misdirect them um, for what? Because he follows you around. That's why every time when you do that, he you get hit. If you just start moving and then you just turn really quickly, like you'll be able to avoid. I like that the biggest enemy in this game is the camera. Yeah. Yeah, it's just the way this kid. Though this is also like I guess a lot of critiques from a lot of these old 3D games is that for a lot That's of them, the cam not the cam controls were kind of ass, which is why some I games wasn't even it wasn't me. Which is why some games had the fixed camera angle. Anyone for a while. On the Um, Listen. Tyler, I actually have a question for you. What? Because I haven't watched Am the Mandalorian. Am I safe here? Maybe. Just start throwing, dude, instead of waiting. Um, do they explain how Boba Fett uh, came back? Kind of. What What happened? I, I'm not going to tell you because it's... Well, it, 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 it affects what I'm doing. So I, was, I would like... You have to go to the other side okay. for, the, for the last one. The last one, I can't hit it right here. I mean, you can try, but you're probably going to need to go. I have to get... You have two hits, so you're fine. I have one hit. No, you have two hits in terms of you can take one hit. Oh, you could, you could do that. Yeah, and then it's just this last guy, but I have to... I have one life left, right, after this? You have so. two. So let me grab the bottles with this life. Misdirect him, misdirect him, misdirect him. You're going to get hit. I'm not. Woo! Fucking biggest dick in the West, oh. brother. Biggest dick in the West, huh? Huh? Big dick look like. <laughs> All right, so I just have to hit this guy, right? I have to be up a little higher. That's all right. We have one more life. We can do this, guys. Doesn't it reset when you die, though? What? No. If it reset when I was... <sighs> I'd fucking come. <laughs> oh, dude. Dude, uh, wait. Can't you just do it from the from the ground? No, you have to be on a pillar to throw bottles. Oh, okay. Which is good game design. Come on, guys. I'm just trying to stay as quiet as fuck because I just, I just want to see this get completed right here. <clears throat> that ain't gonna happen. So what were we talking about? We were talking about Boba Fett. Yeah, I was asking how he came back to life. I will rip off my pubes and then put uh, them on my face. It's. It's not necessarily explained. Book of Boba Fett comes out in like two weeks. Okay. Um, but basically, uh, it's the same thing from the films. Uh, the arbor was enchanted by Mandalorian enchants, killed uh, the Sagoth pit inside. He was passed out. Jawa stole his armor, and now he had to get it back. And he gets back his armor, and now he's Boba Fett. It's the same thing that happened in the comics. Ah, okay. Does that do anything for you? Or? No, it's kind of annoying, but I'll, I'll accept it. Um, Can we see him from here? Okay, gotta get on that pillar. What are you trying to do? I have to get on that pillar down there. Because I have to, I basically have to hit the Blues Brothers buddy or whatever. I think I can stand right here. Woo! Yes! 
Yes! Wait, did we actually? We yes! did it! <laughs> Woo! Oh my god! It's Buster Keaton! Woo! Ba -da -da. Da -da -da. That's actually... That's, that's us, bro. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we finally did it. And we... You know what? I actually feel like we did something there. We uh, made a promise. That, that was a promise that we succeeded on. What's your guys' opinion on Star Trek? I'm not a huge fan. Dude, I don't think Just I've loses ever already. Been, like, seen a single thing of Star Trek before. Star Trek's pretty fly. It's pretty good. It's... I, I never really got too deep into it. I'd probably have to... Like, I can't give my opinion on it because I haven't watched, like... You know how some people are like, name every Star Trek film that's ever come out. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, I've never done that. I've, I've watched a majority of the films. I think I've missed two. Uh... I've, I know I've watched all the original series mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. with with the Shatman. Uh, I've also seen a majority of the Next Generation, which is way better. Uh, I've seen a little bit of Deep Space Nine because of Ryan, because Ryan was like, "You need to watch it. You need to watch it," and it is it is it is quite good. Uh, I've never seen Voyager. I've never seen Enterprise. I've not seen a single fucking thing of Picard. Or any of the new shows. I haven't seen... I've seen... Uh, for the movies, I've seen, like, the first, like... I know I've seen the first six. I've seen Generations, First Contact. But I haven't seen Insurrection or Nemesis. And I've seen the first two with Chris Pine. But I haven't seen uh, Star Trek Beyond. Is that the newest one? The yeah. One Spock? Yeah, I haven't seen that. That one was pretty good. There's only one reason, one reason I never bothered with Star Trek, and it's because when I was a kid, I thought That's it was a Star Wars ripoff, which, come to find out, that is very inaccurate, but I honestly feel like I'd like Star Trek now as an adult. Yeah. So. I eventually um, want to give it a chance. Yeah, I, I want to give it a chance, too. So, according to you, Mark, which, where do you start with Star Trek? Uh, I mean, I feel like, the thing with Star Trek that sucks is that there's so much fucking lore. There's, so, uh, much yeah, there's so many of them. I mean, I would probably watch, like, look up a top ten of the best episodes of the original series and see what you, like, do you like campy shit? Uh, what do you mean campy shit? You know what I mean. Like, you know, it's like, it's like, it's, it's, it, Star Trek's goofy. And then, oh. and then it gets serious. But, like, the original series is pretty fucking goofy. Alright, well, I actually kind of despise that, so. Uh, well, not like, I know, despise is not, it's like. Are we, is it the really, really old ones? Like, the ones done in, like, the, like... Six, six, yeah. Yeah, okay. Those I actually might find difficult to watch. Yeah, me too. So... I'd probably say watch the episode Space Seed and then watch Star Trek 2. Okay. I mean, I watched Space Seed, Doctor Who as a kid. I'm good. Space Seed is a really good episode that they, they like, make a direct sequel to in Star Trek 2. Rather, because Star Trek 1, the movie is awful. The first, okay. first Star Trek movie is one of the most boring fucking movies... Uh, it, instead of being like a wild space adventure movie that like Star Trek's supposed to be, it's they're trying to be 2001: A Space Odyssey, but with William Shatner, and you don't want that. No one yeah. wants that. Yeah, no. So, okay, so watch episode. Is it episode of season one or two of Star Trek, the original series called Space Seed, and then watch Star Trek: Two Wrath of Khan, because those are direct, like direct links and if you like Wrath of Khan then you'd go into Star Trek 3 and then 4 and then etc etc what was the episode called again? Space Seed Star Trek Space Seed uh yeah I was these all up so cool oh it was episode 22 from season 1 yeah it's it's one of the best one the best episode is Enemy Within which is the one where Captain Kirk gets like half of his soul taken out and there's like two Captain Kirks and one of them's evil Boy, gets and it's out of that's him. a really good episode um but no the next generation's better because the characters are better but like you can't go also but like you know you you want to start with Kirk and Spock and stuff but like the cast and crew and like characters of <gasps> what the what? fuck what? Woo! what I'm super Elroy baby I hate get this. this dick, bitch. I hate this more. You look like bootleg Superman. I'm bootleg Superman, bitch. <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. I think it just makes me invincible. 
I guess I don't so. think we've ever gotten this power up. I don't remember it. Also, this is an hour and a half episode. Yeah, I think we should just try and beat this level. We should try to beat each level. I really hope it's not nearly as long as the Windy City. I don't believe it is. This one, see how this one only has two keys? Yeah, the Windy City had seven keys. Yeah, it had seven, seven keys, keys and with two running places, and to get to the end, it took fucking 90 minutes. Pretty much, so it's just... The Windy City, I, I was just getting so much, like, seeing that same... This is the Gray don't you all know this is the Halloween episode of uh, 2022. Basically, <laughs> that's how far it took us. Uh, oh my god. Oh, maybe I need to be Super Elroy to get that jump in. Maybe. So, what do you guys think is the better trilogy, the Star Wars original trilogy or um, the Lord of the Rings trilogy? Lord of the Rings. You know what? 100 I'm just gonna say real fucking quick, and you percent, both are gonna really. hate me for this, but I fucking hate Lord of the Rings. That's fine. That's fair, because you want to know what? I haven't watched Lord of the Rings in probably 10 years. It holds up. And every time I try, I can't do it. Yeah. I don't know. I tried watching it with Josh. I tried He showed me the extended cut, and I was like, this is actually kind of cringe. To me, it was like, I don't know. It's one of those things, like, this is going to sound almost blasphemous to say, but, like, Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter, which I hate Harry Potter even more. But it's, um... I don't like Harry Potter either. It's, just, it's so bad. But I guess... I don't know why, but, like... I'm not that crazy into fantasy-based stuff. Like, there's a few exceptions. There are a few fantasy thing, a few, a few fantasy-themed things that I like. But Lord of the Rings was just like, I don't know. It was like something that like I can see it being a good movie, but like I just could not get past like five minutes of it. It's, it's a lot. Yeah, that's that's the biggest problem with it. It it is a lot, and if you're not really like into Lord of the Rings, it's, you know. Yeah. It's not for you. If you're not into, like, Tolkien shit. But I love Lord of the Rings. That's, like, my shit, bro. Feel free to elaborate on why it's so good, though. Oh, why? Yeah. Uh, they used a lot of practical effects in the movie, mm -hmm. which is why it really still fucking holds up. The story's just great overall, but I really love the characters. And I love that it's not, like, this this ragtag team of, like, action-heavy characters. Like, one of the, the, the big, strong characters you think that's going to live through it dies. Mm -hmm. really early in the movie because he gets corrupted by the ring so it really shows like the true strength is on the inside it's just this really wonderful thing to see that like sam is the main character through the whole movie and he's just helping frodo get through it mm -hmm. like without sam the movie wouldn't have happened frodo would have gotten corrupted and stuff like that uh the character for smeagol is great i mean some at some points he looks a little kind of fucky because yeah. it's an older <laughs> movie but like it still, like, holds up today. Like, he still looks great. All right. I can see that being decent writing. And it was a book before, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It was written by uh, J.R.R. Tolkien. Oh, I see. All right, so I can definitely see why it's a classic film. Um, the Schmeagle dude used to actually creep me out as a kid, though. <laughs> yeah. We used to call my neighbor uh, Schmeagle. My precious. Yeah, because oh, he used to no. come to my house and eat all our food. Oh, are you? Oh, yeah, my so God. I he looked like fucking Smeagol. He was like fucking six feet tall and had like a concave chest. He was a great a man. A concave chest. Yeah. He looks like a cartoon character. He does. I, you know, it's funny when you meet somebody him, that looks like a cartoon character. You're just like, why? But it's great though. So he says I can hit these. Yeah. So I actually kind of agree with Rich because I I also don't really like fantasy shit as we learned from Travis trying to do Ocarina of Time. Yeah. This is where the debate's gonna start to begin. It's not. I, I mean, like, I'm fine with people not liking Ocarina of Time. It is what it no, is. No, it's not. I mean, no, we've already we've already discussed that in nauseum. I'm saying, like, it's just like with fantasy shit. Like, the only ones that ever really got me was Lord of the Rings. But then I it what lost. The fuck just happened. But then it lost me once I saw the Hobbit movies. The Hobbit movies are awful. Yeah, I have a three-hour cut. So mad because fucking, what's it called? Like, I really like the characters of the fucking, the dwarves, but they're just, most of them you don't see enough. Yeah, I mean, I have a three hour cut of the movie. Like, the only one you really see is, uh, what's his name? Uh, what's the main dwarf? I don't know, the one oh. who doesn't look like a dwarf? Yeah, um. You know, and you get too much of that fucking Keeley guy when he's trying to fuck the yeah, elf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and you're just like, I don't care about this at all. Yeah, I mean, I also... Like, we've already seen Aragon fucking Elf. We're fine. We don't need to see it again. Yeah, I have a three-hour cut somewhere on my computer that I, I want to watch, but every time I, I go to do it, I'm just like, I really don't want to. I feel like we didn't get enough time for, like, the cool dwarves either. Like, Bombor, he was great. He's, like, one of the best parts in the movie, and it's during one of the worst parts of the movie. What part? What part do you think? Dude, I don't remember What's them. the part that I always fucking point out that I hate? The trolls? I, no, I point. I love the trolls part. That part's great. Um, the part that I point out when we watched the movie in theaters, and I was like, that looks awful. I don't remember. Really? Yeah. Okay. The the barrel scene? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, remember yeah, they yeah, used yeah. a fucking GoPro? So it went from, like, these beautiful cinematic shots to using a fucking GoPro? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, this looks awful. And it's like, yeah, it's sponsored by GoPro. Yeah, I, was like, I remember that now. So bad. I haven't right? seen that. Like, I, I haven't watched the Hobbit movies since they came out. What do you have? What are you trying to do? I'm trying to kill these off because I have to go and collect all of this stuff. This just looks like Ocarina of Time. Just this it is. One area. It's it, just. Oh. It literally is, bro. And Banjo Kazooie. I love Banjo Kazooie. Yeah. That one was cool. That is my, like, I'm okay with people shitting on Ocarina of Time, but Banjo Kazooie's great. Yeah, wait till we get to the episode. Um, oh fuck yeah, dude! I'm so excited. But uh, the only other fantasy thing that ever caught me. Was uh well actually there's actually no there's actually a couple of them, so Lord of the Rings. Yep. Uh the and then I really love Labyrinth. Labyrinth, the David Bowie movie. Yeah. That movie's awesome. And don't I, go this way. Don't go that way. And then I I also oh, like I, I also like Dark Crystal Crystal. Dark Crystal's great. And then I also and then obviously I love the Life and the Adventures of Santa Claus. Which one's that? The I trolls and goblins and shit? That's the way I was one where I haven't seen it. Where Santa fights orcs? Yeah, you told me about it, but I haven't seen it. So. I've watched it like six times this year. Really? Yeah, for Christmas. Oh, yeah. uh, well, last year. Yeah. It's alright. We're in 2020. I guess We're this trying. counts as a fantasy movie, technically, but honestly, I just like Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Especially good, the old Disney one. But I hate Through the Looking Glass, I can tell you that. Oh, right yeah, now. Through the Looking Glass, no, but it's like. I don't know, but for some reason, like, the, why I dug Alice in Wonderland is just because it's so fucking trippy. <laughs> yeah. It's just, like, everything in there is just kind of bizarre, and, like, especially when it came to animation, I was always into, like, just surrealism. Just stuff that's like, what? It's kind of like this, like, other movie, like, I haven't seen it in full yet, but I'm, I really want to watch it, but it's, um, The Holy Mountain. What's that? Oh, dude, like... It's a Jodorowsky film. Yeah. Is it good? No. <laughs> you don't like it? No. All right, so... I well, doesn't met... like anything, though. It's all fine. right. It's all good. I've met plenty of people that disagree, but... I only simply want to watch it simply because, like, when I saw bits of it, it just looked bizarre, and just from it being bizarre, it just seems that? like something that, like, I could just kind of, like, just stare at. Like, I don't even care if it has any substance to it at all. I just want to, like... I just like yeah, seeing surreal stuff is always I th always thought was kind of appealing. Yeah, I like surrealism, but I only like it when it has like a point. I see. Like I I like like obviously I love when David Lynch does it sometimes. Like I like it in Blue Velvet, and I like it in Mulholland Drive, and I like it in Wild at Heart. Mm -hmm. But I hate it in Eraserhead. Razor, dude, I have not seen that movie in a very long time. I, unpopular opinion, don't like Ra Eraserhead. I think I like I like elements of Eraserhead. I love the aesthetic of Eraserhead. I love the ra Lady in the Radiator sequence. Everything, everything is fine. Like, that part's amazing, but I think the rest of the movie is boring. I forget where I'm supposed to go from here. I think I have. Yeah, I guess here. so. It's like. The race was definitely more of a uh, kind of a forgettable movie too. Yeah, it's a, it's definitely weird. Yeah, like that's where it gets its kicks. Uh, let's see, two of two notes are hidden here. Let me just make sure I got all the notes in here, so I don't have to go back in. But going more on surrealism, what do you think see. of heavy metal? The <laughs> heavy metal's all right. All right, because when I saw heavy metal, like. I remember seeing, like, when I was a kid, just seeing, like, the, um, like, not necessarily the, uh, the nudity parts, but I just remember seeing bits of it on the TV somewhere. 
Um, and I remember thinking like, no, 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 not heavy metal. I'm, I'm, I, I am talking about heavy metal, but I'm talking like I remember seeing when I was younger, like Aeon Flux. Do you remember what that was? No. Oh, okay. So this is like kind of MTV Liquid TV kind of shit. It was a really like a gross, surreal, animated kind of uh, show. It was like a South Korean kind of show, and it was just I can't even describe it. Uh, you have this one character, I mean, she's dressed in this very, like, sexual kind of way, but it's, like, it's so, like, the way it's animated is just very repulsive looking. So, if you want to, like, I, I can't describe it in words, but it'd be, like, one of those things that you just look up. But for a while, I remember thinking that was heavy metal, but I was wrong. So, um, but when I finally saw heavy metal, I was just sort of, a uh, the first one, not 2000. Heavy metal 2000 was pretty bad, but, um... The first heavy metal, though, I mean, the music was pretty cool, but I just liked kind of the, uh, I guess, like, I could tell there was a lot of, like, care that went into it, a lot of, like, um, you know, the shifting animation styles and stuff, the shifting characters and protagonists, it was just short story after short story, so I always just kind of thought that was definitely something pretty cool. But it's not, like, a movie that I think anybody needs to, like, watch, like, right now. It's, like, a movie you watch if you're really stoned or something. <laughs> yeah, it's a movie you watch when you're a teenager and you, you never watch it again. Basically. It's a movie you watch when you're, like, a teenager in someone's basement. Basically. Alright, let's see. We gotta find a key. We have two keys we're looking for. There's some notes hidden here. Can I just run into these guys? I really fucking hate those piranha plants. Me too. Are she supposed to be like invincible? I have to get up there somehow. I feel like I have to get on these trees somehow. Mark, can you type in uh no. looks at a walkthrough mid oh. let's play? <laughs> oh no, I was just gonna see uh if there's a power that I have with the super suit. So I feel like there there's a power that I'm missing. Maybe this will tell me. Nope, do a backflip. Okay, cool. Yeah, do a backflip. There we go. Hey! Woo! <laughs> Woo! Alright. Um. Hmm. What's your guys' favorite uh, Christmas movies? Again, I know Christmas I, is dude, over. Yeah, it was but, literally like a month ago. Yeah, but still, you know, it's good to talk about a little bit. No. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're. Recording this way ahead of time. Don't break the illusion, Richard. We, we, we play this once. We, we do this one, once, once a week. Yeah, That's true. Of course. That we do weird. it live. There's no editing involved. Fuck it. We do it live. Fuck it. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what makes it authentic. What the fuck? My favorite though? Christmas movie is the uh, Top the Fourth Wall, the movie. It doesn't take place on Christmas, but. Um, it gives me a lot of joy and puts you in the Christmas spirit. Um, <laughs> my Christmas, my favorite Christmas movie will always be Home Alone, specifically Home Alone One. Yeah. Everybody wants to be Kevin McAllister when they were a kid. I think Home Alone Two is a superior film. I mean, I see your point there. No, I hear and what you guys I do are saying, really like. It ain't Jingle All the Way. I do really like Home Alone Two, so I'm not gonna disagree with you. But. Home Alone 1 just kind of hits a little bit harder. But I do like Home Alone 2 a lot. Yeah, but Home Alone 3, though. Fuck no, get out of here. Home, Home Alone 3 is not that bad. It's bad, but it ain't that bad. No, 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 no. Any type of bad. The second I kind of rule out, like, oh, this movie kind of sucks, it's like, I will never, ever bother with it again. Dude, there's a guy named Burton Jernigan in the third one. Hey, I, like, in the third... Here's the thing. I vaguely remember the actor of the third one, the kid star... Um, I, in 10 years, I'm not gonna know who that, that face is anymore. Dude, that was the kid from Max Keeble's Big Move. Oh, Am yeah. I supposed to go up there somehow? And, I mean, I'll, I'll say this, is like... Home Alone 3 might be bad, but ain't Home Alone 4 bad. Yeah, Home Alone And Home Alone 4, Alone 4 is not as... And Home Alone 5 might be bad, but ain't Home Alone 4 bad. I didn't even know they made that many. Dude, Malcolm McDowell was in Home Alone 5. That's awful. Why?! <laughs> He needs his money. And like, there's a Home Alone 6 that I have not seen yet, but by all accounts is the worst one yet. 
I refuse to. There was a Home Alone game on PS2. Yeah. That, that like, it was in Europe, but it was so unbelievably horrible. When you think about it, Home Alone would never happen today. Like, that movie, if it yeah. came out now, would never happen. Yeah, because Joe Pesci's retired. Um, no, yeah, Joe, <laughs> of course. And, like, my, and, 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 and Michael A. Culkin's, like, in his 40s. Um, Yo, yeah, but, like, just the plot of Home Alone would never I know, fucking with you. Fuck you. Um, Jingle All the Way is fantastic, though. I agree with Tyler. Uh, Again, know. that one one that <laughs> people would just order on Amazon. Yeah, that I just like the I like this the uh, you know the the Phil Hartman trying to Phil Hartman trying to fuck uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's oh, yeah. wife. Oh, these cookies! Put that cookie down! Put no! Cookie down. Or when or like when he when, when Arnold tries to assault like a like a uh, a little girl in a fucking um, ball pit because he has the fucking the thing. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Or when he's gonna say he got to he, he got, got to. to. It's so good, bro. I watched yeah. it the other day. Alright, question then. Would you rather... Did you look, um, did you look this up? Fight no. Arnold Schwarzenegger? No. Okay, I'll or... Look. Chill in the Anaconda Ball Pit? Ooh. Chill in the Anaconda Ball Pit because the Anaconda would kill me. <sighs> Arnold Schwarzenegger would probably say something lightly racist. Yeah? I mean... Those they they both suck really bad. So, but I'd rather get hit by Arnold Schwarzenegger than chill in, in the Anaconda ball pits. I would get, the Anaconda would kill me, and very quickly. Very quickly, yes. And John Voight would probably be there, and Angelina Jolie, Ice Cube. <laughs> That's who I, Ice Cube. Ice Cube was in. Ice Cube was in. Ice Cube was in Anaconda, right? And now I'm playing the game, and I just. Yeah, just don't die. We only have. Tell what are you what are you, what are you supposed to do? Do you know what you're supposed to do? I'm supposed to get up on that tree, but I can't get up on that I tree. I suck at this game so bad. Okay, I'll, I'm I'm playing now. All right, you try. So wait, and get where up on where the tree. where? All right, the tree. Which tree? There's a lot of trees. There's there's one trampoline, and it's near a tree. Okay. I, I was just there. It's. Oh, okay. You can, yeah, grab the super Elroy while you're at it. See if you can figure it out. See if he has any moves. I wonder if he has like a fly or something. Uh, let's see, where are we? Let's How do you do a backflip? Uh, LB. Or left uh, trigger, bumper, or whatever. The thing above the left joystick. Left side. There you go. Let's see. Huh. Okay. First area has coins in it. What's down here? What? Oh yeah, I already went in there. Okay. Graveyard. Okay. You walk left. Uh, stomp on the yellow button. This will cause some platforms. Blah blah blah. blah. Um, I think it's uh, really weird. The uh, the offspring is still a band. The Offspring, there was one good album from them that I really liked. I forget what Smash. it was called. I don't know if it was Smash. Jump on the up. treetops, then jump on the wiggly notes. That's all it says. So you gotta jump on the, the little... Uh, yeah, where's the trampoline? Go back to the path. It's on that path. Are you here? Yeah, just... You can press Z to uh, dash through people, too. That, that's a good way to... Ah, uh, okay, so... I can't even pronounce it. If you can get on that tree top, that'd be great. Oh, like, stay on the hombre? Yep. That one was my favorite. That one just had, like... Just, like, I didn't listen to Smash. All right. See, you get I have so a close. Alright. Uh, you see how difficult it is to get on that freaking treetop? I do see how difficult it is. That's what I was doing. I was like, does Super Hellroy work? And it just says, no, it just says get up there. Completely optional, but this one makes uh, platforms appear. Punch the music box, run towards the waterfall, climb down the platforms above the pool. Get the jumps up. Drop down. Uh, there's a row. Among them is a high up power up. Grab it. A power up. 
Jump up on the pro. Oh, what the fuck? What, you got up? Are you in the tree? I am. Hey! I can't get out. <laughs> Press start. Are you stuck? Oh, oh, oh! Speedrunner's paradise. Maybe you have to go to the tree. Like jump down into the tree. Do a, do a jump butt thing. Yeah, but in the middle of the tree. There you go. That was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. That was some cool tech. I'll give you that. It's a happy Martin Luther King Day for me, brother. It's probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see. We're actually recording this in August of 2020. Yeah. Why would you lie to our fans? It's in 2019 still, brother. True. Do, 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 do. I can't wait for all the things we're gonna do. Oh, yeah, I'm on the I'm on the tree. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. Uh, sorry. Tree tops. Then jump uh to the wiggly note. Looking to jump <gasps> higher. No! And use the new hops to jump to the other note and a crystal heart. So there's a crystal heart. Yeah, I saw the crystal heart. Notes. I fucked it up all the. Yeah. When all I, right, when that's I, fine. When I you, die. you got the super jump. Just make sure to use it on that trampoline to get up there easy. Ah, oh, do the dash. Ooh. So close. Why is this one like impossible to get up? Imagine being the kid on Christmas to get this and be like, oh boy! And then you're playing this and you're like, I hate myself, brother. Oh my god. What's your favorite part of Jingle All the Way? My favorite part? Mm hmm. Is when, his, is when his wife bangs her head on the fucking sink? No. I think my favorite part is fucking. I, I really like the dynamic between fucking. The main character, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and the mailman played by Sinbad. I really love the fucking part when they're running is Dash and Dance of Friends of Vixen Comic Vixen. <laughs> and they get in and he's like, Yo, I got this bomb in the mail. They come through all the time. And then he goes, There's some sick people in this world. Sick people And I'm back. I like I like when he I love when he when like he's talking to him and he looks over at Adam and he sees like his, his, Yeah. And you see you, young Dad. Anakin fucking drinking. It's great. What are we talking about now? Jingle all the way. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. That movie's great. Have you ever seen it? Um, the Arnold Schwarzenegger one? Yep. Only bits of it. Long you long. have to rewatch it. It okay. holds up. I watch it every year. It's great. Yeah, he also watches it like on every day. Yeah. All right, so, all right, that's It's now free on YouTube. That. All right, now I'm going to say something very blasphemous to Mark. Now, and Mark's going to tease me and probably uh, keep going on a bunch of uh, jokes about this for the uh, duration of the episode, but um, I still haven't watched Nightcrawler yet. You're stupid. <laughs> uh, Dude, this is impossible. And it's coming from someone who's done it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, why would I do that? I may be a trick. Yeah, oh, my package shipped. Hooray. Uh, there we right. go. So it says uh, underground cave. Jump down to the bitey plants. Uh, leave the area at the entrance you came and climb out of the pool. Run back up the hill, you'll find a fenced gate. Punch the doors. And start punching Grishon's. No respect for the dead. <laughs> you know what this game feels oh like. Oh my gosh. Oh, you got up there. Woo! Yeah, I got the wiggly note and I got the fucking. Yeah, okay. Do you want to know what this game feels like, though, in all honesty? We need to heal at it some point. It feels like uh, wait, Kari will be just on Wait, b before anything, Mark, go back into that pool. Oh. No, 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 don't go back that way. Let me say. I'm going to go get you fully healed. No, you can play the game. Oh, okay, cool. All right, cool. this feels Akari Warriors? very much like Akari Warriors on NES. I've never Akari played Akari, Akari Warriors. Why? All right, so the reason why is because it's um, very long and mundane levels. With um, a, a very lacking color palette, is why. So, this is kind of what this feels like. Granted, you're not hitting A B B A all the time just to kind of respond, but I am slamming Z's like this. 
Slamming Z's. Slamming some Z's. That sounds like I'm taking a good ass nap. Yeah. Slamming some Z's, brothers. Slamming some fucking Z's. Yes, dude. brothers. Fucking, yes. You see, it's like the Z's in Metal Gear Solid. Just fucking. <laughs> yes, 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 Daddy. Like. Do 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 do. What a thrill. Not for honor. You ever see that video of that girl? You. And she's like, Nuzzles, how are you? Pounces on you. You so warm. Ooh. Ooh. Pull you across the floor, oh, nuzzle yeah. and muzzle your neck, you pussy, you asshole, you crack. <laughs> Just start rapping it out. Funny. Hell yeah, bros. Yeah. No, I, they're muzzy. Do you guys know the rapper Stitches? Stitches? Oh, you guys are missing out. This guy is a legend. I'm not gonna say anything, but he has this song called Molly Cyrus. It's like he he used to be like, or I guess still was, a drug dealer while he was doing his rap career, and. uh to give you a little thing about stitches for a second is um you got bitches he has this tattoo on his like across his face it's like stitches like just along his lips kind of like the joker or like jack skellington I'm but the, joke, it's because baby. of the saying snitches get stitches yeah tyler you need to you need to lean towards the right but he like has this one, one yeah. song about yeah. miley cyrus and it's about how much he wants to fuck miley cyrus and he says like shit like let me stick my thumb in your butt or something like. <laughs> I already got everything on the trees. Oh, well, that's cool. You ever hear? Uh, I remember one time me and this kid Isaiah we used to go to Bulmos every like every couple days, and we uh, one night we were we were outside of Fuck it, this place. And, uh, no respect there was for the dude. CD team. left on the fl on the ground, and it was this guy named Basic Rick mixtape, and it was the worst mixtape I've ever heard in my life, and I loved it. Uh, like it was like this white kid, like New Hampshire white kid boy rapping. And he's like, I'm pure evil. I'm pure evil. I know it's fucked up, but bitch, I don't care because I'm pure evil. I'm pure evil. And I was like, this is so good. Was he pure evil? He was, because he was making me listen to his mixtape. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, nothing like that has ever happened again. Although, every time I, when I was in London for a while, like, every, like, every time you'd walk 20 feet, some guy was really hand, trying to hand you with their mixtape, and then you'd be like, okay, cool, and then you'd be like, no, I'm charging you for it, and it's like, bro. I feel like that's every metropolitan area. Yeah. yeah. It's like, bro, I don't even know if you're good. Uh, that reminds me, I was in New York one time. Especially because they're British. So well, now it's bad. usually just they pass you their SoundCloud link, which is dope. And then you get to hear this awful sound. Nah, music. there was this one dude in New York when I went one time I went to New York and he was trying to sell like me and my cousin this like mixtape of his. And it was the stupidest thing ever. Like he literally like stopped us and he was talking forever about this. And it was like he wanted money, that's the thing. Like he, I didn't like what was it? We didn't take his shit, but like literally I'm sure there was nothing on the mixtape whatsoever. Because literally what was on it was like it was a cover of him with like um like, you know, dressed in, like, all, like, fancy rapper looking, but, like, he, uh, it was him with, like, the Koopalings from Super Mario Brothers, and in the Mario font, it said, pay the dudes. Dude, you should've. No. You should've. Oh, my gosh. I want that on a t-shirt, to be honest. It was so bad. I was, like, I, I couldn't believe what I was looking at. It was. Bro, I would I would buy that T-shirt. Yo, um, can we make a band thing that just says "Pay the dues" with us dressed as Goombas, yeah. please? Dude, it's so good. I have another good rap, like ah. mixtape story. So me and Porco were at Guitar Center, right? Mm -hmm. And this guy, this guy who worked there, he doesn't work there anymore, but he gave us his mixtape, and it was the greatest thing we've ever heard in our life. It's the best what rap happened? album. It was the best rap album. It's the best al rap album. Uh, you can find it on Bandcamp, uh, Mouse McGillicuddy. We're finding this. Mouse! Mouse hey. McGillicuddy, Magic Johnson. Right. Opens up with he's, he's him. Alright, this is him getting a shout out. It is. Shit he, up right now. He, uh, it opens up with him having sex with somebody and, and then saying all the thank yous that he, for the album. And the girl's like, are you, what are you doing? He's like, I'm recording the album. I'll fuck this up. And, and then she's like, shut it up, shut it up, shut it up, shut it up, shut it up. And then he goes, woke up this morning. I was, I was ready, ready to fuck. fuck. Called up my girl. She said, what was up? It was my dick. About to be a lump and I got. I'll be wiggling my pickle while she squeezed my nuts. 
Yeah, I don't fucking... I, I just remember you playing that on repeat. Dude, it was such a good album. Woke up this morning, I was ready to fuck. Called up my girl, she said, what was up? It was my dick, all about to be in her guts. Yeah, and then there's, like, Dude, other so great good. songs, like, uh... <laughs> Uh, I that sounds your, like a two live crew song. I fucked your mom. Uh, and then there's also I, I wanna fuck you where you shit. Um, and uh, what else is there? There's the, the, the Fat Beezy. Oh, he's on my dick. <laughs> Dude, I love mouse. If I start SoundCloud rap, if I start doing SoundCloud rapping, I already thought of my name. <laughs> you said SoundCloud Rat Dick. I was like, that's no, dope name, dude, bro. SoundCloud Rat Dick. Oh, I'll keep that in mind, but one of my names is going to be this. It's either one or the other. It's either going to be Robo Ginger Rat Ale. Penis. Just Ginger Ale. Or it's going to be Lil Schweppes. <laughs> Lil Schweppes is right, very good. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you in a second. Cool, cool, cool. I think if you remember, Mark, you should put it in the... Uh... Uh, Mouse's band camp? Yeah, put it in the... Uh, what's it called? Wait, what does it say? When I did that? Okay, it's probably important. That's why. It said earth, wind, fire, and water, or some shit. So maybe I have to suck them off. So what? Yeah. That's usually how to get what you need in this game. You just gotta suck off the devs. Basically. Yeah, I think I showed you that like like an hour ago. Oh yeah, you did. The one thing I wish you could do in this game is the the Mario sixty four backflip. Yeah. You can do this back. This <laughs> little one. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sorry about the long episodes, fellas. We're gonna uh we're gonna try and get through this. This might be a long one, but you know, it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. Then then all we'll have left is the uh I think it's the swamp, right? And that's all mini games. If I remember correctly. I think so. That one's pretty breezy this one's not awful though i mean it's gonna be a longer episode but like i'm not having as bad of a time as the windy city dude again the windy yeah it's less windy the windy city, less city was just like giving, raising my blood pressure so much yeah i feel that and like i wasn't even playing the game i was just watching it and i was just okay this this part but then when i did actually play it for a little bit i wanted to fucking die Woo. I also really hate how he's making a noise when he jumps. Just give it a beep. You don't make a noise when you jump? I go, oh. Mm. Oh, is it? Oh my god. Okay, which one do I start with? Booty Blast? This morning I was ready to fuck. Called up on the bitch. There we go, brother. <laughs> Magic Johnson is the greatest rap album ever made. It's called Magic Johnson. Do I have to go this way, Mark? I don't know. I think I have to sign that button. No, I don't know anymore. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Let's do it off air. Let's do it off air. Okay, got it, got it, got it. How much longer, Tyler? As long as it takes, usually. Because we're both to, to hit our hour and a half, my guy. That's what I said. It's going to be a long one, brother. Are we going to beat it in this episode? No. Oh. I think we're going to have to, like, stop it. All right. I wouldn't listen to a two-hour podcast about uh, <laughs> this show. I wouldn't even listen to a one-hour podcast about Blues Brothers 2000. This game fucking sucks. If you're here for Blues Brothers 2000 content, I'm so sorry. You know what I think is funny is we've had ample enough time because we've done this for like six weeks to watch Blues Brothers 2000, the movie, and none of us did it. <laughs> I, I, yeah, you remember that part when they go to the tomb and they have to jump across fucking bats to get to the final boss? Yeah, yeah me fucking neither, brother. Well, we got skeletons, bats, and ghosts. What is this, Boo Haunted House? Boo a Medea's Halloween? Shut up. Yo. It's funny. <laughs> oh my god. Have we told that story, Tyler? No. No. Okay. But I will say this. I remember and your code when I first came in, wasn't even we playing this. I had no I 
I knew there was Blues Brothers and Blues Brothers 2000. I'd never seen Blues Brothers 2000. Didn't know anything about it. And I was just like, oh, well, might be a good movie. And you guys like, no, it's fucking not. And I'm like, okay, well, that's a sign that I will never, ever watch it. It's probably for the best. Probably. So, when me and Tyler worked at the movies, we we, we used to have to clean up for Boo Medea's Halloween 2. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and there was a part where in the post credits, they just have this little old lady go, And your car wasn't even bread! And then they're like, What? And then she's like, And your car? No, no, like, Did you just say your corn wasn't even bread? And uh, and Tyler thought that was the funniest thing ever, and I did too. It was so funny. So we would we would just send each other videos when like if he wasn't working and I was, I would like send him a video of me in <laughs> the trash compactor go in your corn. <laughs> wasn't even bread. bread? <laughs> <laughs> funniest shit I've heard all day. <laughs> I don't know if I can get on this platform. I've tried way too many times. I don't think I can. Well, what is a platform game without platforms? Mm -hmm. I've already hit both buttons, so we've done that. So we're like halfway there, right? Yeah, living on a prayer. Take my hand. I fucking hate Bon Jovi Make so it, I much. swear. Oh, oh. There's a couple Bon Jovi songs I like. I Oops. like that. It's my life. It's a now Dead or alive. I mean, I'll take. I'm a cowboy. I remember back in high I'm school, a me and Porco wrote a pilot for a show that never happened, obviously, because we were in high school. Um. But we wrote a sh a, a, sh a series called '80s Moms," and if you just deal with like these like mom like these women who grew up in the '80s who are now moms and like they live like these really shitty existences. Um, and like, the theme song though was gonna be that was gonna we we had an argument about it because we were like, which one which song represents '80s mom mo the most? And it's either "Air Rose Has Its Thorn." Or it's um Sorry. fucking come on feel the noise, girls, girls rock you boys. Because me and him had a friend of like whose mom was was like like we all have we all have an eighties mom. But uh, he was he, one of our friends' eighties mom. You still would get, would get like stoned, and when she gets stoned, she's like blast music. But it was always those two songs. And or like anytime I would drive in the car with my mom, or one of those two songs came on, she would turn it up. Slightly, just very little. Or Porco's mom would like would have always like, had two CDs oh, in her car, and one of them was Avery Rose has its thumb. Or the other one was fucking Come on, feel the noise. And I was like, these two songs are so connected to the fucking people's brains, it's fucked up. I mean, I gotta think about my favorite '80s song. Or really, um, I, I can tell you mine right, right off the bat. Actually, fucking slapped. So Huey much. Lewis in the news. Huey, don't need do money. Like don't news? need fame. Don't need a credit card to ride this train. In '87, Huey released this for their most accomplished album, their hit song "Hit to Be Square," <laughs> a song so catchy, most people probably don't listen to. Our, I, I love American Psycho. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, like this. I think. I think. I mean, like the best '80s songs are probably like a Sonic Youth song or a Black Flag song. No, or I was gonna do. say. Uh, yeah, it's Sonic Youth or to Black Flag. To be totally honest. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, <laughs> <on, laughs> fucking bitch. That's what fuck Mark you, said, you little square. Too hip to be fucking. To be totally honest, my favorite, one of my favorite stinky. albums. If I had to pick like two favorite albums from the '80s, it's probably like Nina's like '99. Nino Cooney too. And then, oh no! All right, let's hit this. But Nina's '99 Red Balloons or Left Balloons, however you pronounce it, or um, Michael Did Jackson's do it? Thriller. It, like, got to scream. That all right? That album Nina, does not have a single bad song. Got to that album is just. You gotta. Uh, you got the thriller. Dude, John Lennon had the worst ass I've ever seen. No. Can I see it? Yeah. Oh Why yeah. Why is it so high? <laughs> <Wait, laughs> He's kind of thick though. That looks like a drawing. What? What is Yoko? Yoko does not have a. Yoko straight up has the Hank Hill ass in that picture. Are you sure this isn't like photo swap? No, this is this. They released this. That's the, that's the back cover of one of their albums. He's got a fucking dumper on him, brother. For us, it's really difficult. <laughs> the shitter to... is full, brother. <laughs> it must be really it's... difficult to wipe his ass. Is this National Lampoon's fucking holiday special? Because that shitter is full, brother. John literally has the word as like the longest ass. That is the longest ass I think I've ever seen. 
now. <laughs> Jacob was like, man, shitting out of his back. <laughs> yeah, dude. I don't like that picture at all. I wish I could unsee it. Oh, no, I got sucked in the air, brother. Oh, no, my table. It's broken. I'm fucking scooting by right here, brother. Scooting by. Two, four, six, eight. I don't think I'm going to be able to top John Lennon's got a badass. So I think that we're going to end the episode here. That's fun. Yep. So we'll see you fucking next week. Be sure to subscribe to all the stuff. Watch the movies, watch the shows, listen to the other podcasts like Running with Bond. And we'll see you fucking next week, motherfucker. Peace. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.